Hey guys, welcome back to another almost inevitable Divi tutorial. And in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to take the default blog post page. It's actually an archive page. And we're going to edit this to look like this guy, masterblogging.com. Now it looks simple, but there are some things that we actually do need to really address when making this I hate pop-ups when making this um, Divi default Divi layout look pretty much exactly like this okay so let's look at how everything is done for uh, first of all um, if you want to edit the archive pages um, separately with the Divi Builder, what you can do is you can hop on over to almostinevitable.com and find, you can actually just search it, but I think it's a recent one, so it should be here. Nope, that's not it. I don't think that's it. Um, category page. Ah. That's weird. I think that was the blue one. Oh boy. Um, category. Oh, they, this one, I guess. Yeah, that, there we go. All right, so um, you can check this one out and it explains how to make your own archive pages and it has another video on that. So yeah, you can make this look like, well, that or um, not that, but here, yeah. So anyways, I explain all that and stuff and I, somebody left a really mean comment here so I just deleted it, so whatever. Anyways, um, but it's good. It's, 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 it explains everything on how to make your own uh, archive pages. So you can check this out if you want to, um, but if you don't want to go through all the process of making your own archive pages, what you can do is, and if you want it to look something like this, which looks really nice, um, I will walk you through the whole process. Now, um, the Divi archive pages are made in a very specific way. Of course it is, but it's, um, it's, made, it's an interesting uh, build. Uh, this line here, this is a pseudo element. And oh, you'll of course learn all about pseudo elements in the upcoming Learn CSS for Divi course that is I'm almost ready to release. I've recorded quite a lot of hours, so um, it goes through everything that you need to know for CSS. It's like a crash course. It doesn't go into all the nitty gritty, but it will give you enough for you to actually code from top down the whole thing and just make your own uh, templates, your own themes and everything for Divi. And it's specifically for Divi. So it's, it, it's really good. All right, so uh, look, look out for that. And um, you can, of course, uh, sign up for the newsletter and that will keep you posted and I'll give you extra uh, uh, offers and discounts and all that if you're on the newsletter. All right, so uh, this is a pseudo element. So we need to take it out with um, taking out the pseudo element itself. So as you can see here, that's what that is, that line. And this blog post is each each post is in the left area, which is floated, and inside are articles, which also have its own margin on the bottom, as you can see in the yellow green over here. And the weird thing is that this text, this excerpt, is not actually inside any tag. I would have put it in a P tag, just so it's easy to manipulate, but it's not. So we had to take I had to take a very lateral approach to um, moving things around. And I'll explain that a little bit once we get into the whole thing. All right, so that's how this is built. And these guys are all, uh, this is an A, H2, and P. So these are all blocks, that's good. All right, uh, spans are not blocks. Uh, P's and H2's, there are usually blocks. If not, we can just make them a block. All right, so we use um, blocks or inline blocks for all this, so that's that's how that that's how that works that's fine um, and these guys the sidebar 
is over here. Oops, oops. There we go. Sidebar is over here, and as you can see, it has some padding in the purple over here, padding on, on the left and the bottom, and each widget is like that. Okay, so what we want to do is make it look like masterblogging.com's blog. All right, now this is from a request that um, someone asked me to do. Like, can you do this? And, you know, like if they're not going to pay for me to do, their, do the job, might as well make a post for this so everybody can enjoy it. And it won't take me too long. So, yeah, this is what I did. It took me about... 30 minutes to get this done so and it's also responsive so I'll, I'll go into all that in a minute so what you can see is different between this guy and the Divi blog is for starters it's in a bunch of cards it looks at it has a card layout look and it's I really like how they did the gutters for these cards because it is consistent and that's really important. Consistent spacing is one of the most important things I think in uh, not just graphic design but of course web design and all design. All right, So it's very important. So they did a good job of that which I think is very nice. And they have a non-white background and they have white cards which is an important thing that we need to address when we're doing this. Right, So um, if you look here, well you can't look here but if you look into the inspector, which I can't find now, um, where is the inspector? Oh, did I close it? Anyways, so uh, these guys, the paddings and all that, see, as you can see over here, the padding is 5.5, which is not going to be consistent throughout later on. It will cause problems. Percentage paddings can cause problems. Um, articles have a margin bottom of 60 and that has a 5.5 so it's never going to be consistent and then this uh, these these widgets all have their own little padding right so if you look here they have a margin bottom of 30 and we're going to use 30 as the main unit for all the all the gutter uh, widths okay all right so um, another thing that we can tell is different is that the top part, this reaches the exact top and here it does not, which I think is good, but if we're going to do exactly what this does, then this makes sense. So we'll do that. And also, um, you can tell that this can, this shows that this is part of the content and here it has the gutters. So it actually shows that these widgets are separate it feels, you know, it makes a little bit of sense that stepped, I think. All right, so that's what we're going to do, okay? Now, it's very easy for me to switch this over right now because um, right now what I have is I've already done it, right? So all I need to do is just change that to main and it's already in queued. So there's this is my playground um, installation. So I just change that to main and reload and... Voila, there we go. So this is all changed. As you can see, there's a step here that's touching the top like that. This is 30, everything is 30, that's 30. It's consistent throughout, so it looks good. And inside, the padding inside the article um, tag is also 30, so it's good. I think it looks okay. All right, so that's a pretty good recreation, I think, yeah, right? Yeah. All right. So I will go through the CSS just a little bit, just so you know what to change if you want to change the styling a little bit. Now, we're, we have to use a lot of flex because remember how I mentioned that these guys are not inside a P tag, the text. So if we're going to flex it, um, and also one really important thing that you miss on initial, uh, you know, overview, you can see that the title is title and the meta meta tags are above the featured image. The title and the meta is above the featured image and then you have the excerpt, which is um, just a 
you can't just change the um, order. So that, that causes problems. So what I had to do was I reversed everything and then I gave um, the image and the title and the meta um, different orders. So that worked. And luckily I got it in the right order. So that works. So we're going to keep it like that. Unfortunately, if I do this, if I go inside a single post, then it just messes everything up because it's in a different order. So what I had to do was take it out when it's in a single post. So that's why here you can see column reverse and here you can see column. So that's how this is built. And in my course, I actually explain how you do all this. But um, here I'm just showing you that that's what I did. And in order to edit the styling or anything, what you can look at is Anytime you see 30, you can change that to change the gutter. I think it's fine as is. Uh, the background here that you see as white is the background of each card or each block as you see here. And everything inside the sidebar is the widgets. As you can see, widgets has a background of white, padding inside of 20 because having it at the same as these guys, um, bit too much so I just left it at 30, 20. You can change it to 30 if you want, it's up to you. Um, and the border is DDD. You can change it to whatever color you want. You can make it red, blue. I just suggest a nice subtle color so I just went with D. Uh, e or whatever, F1, doesn't really matter. Um, the background, this background, this light gray background here is F7. So that's how you change that. All right, and of course, that will change the main site as well. So uh, just make sure you know what's going on. All right. And I think, um, I think that's about it. Yep. So padding, every time you see 30, that's what I did. Um, the way that this is made is here is the line where um, the left area and the sidebar is split. That's the line right here where the widgets touch and you get an extra 30 that pushes the content inside to the left. That's the left, yeah, to the left. So that's how you get that gutter there, all right? And that means if you take, if you, um, oh yeah, that means that um, if you make this into mobile, I'll start with iPad. If you make this into mobile, this is fine. That looks as is on, you know, landscape, uh, on portrait. If you keep that padding there, it needs to go out because otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna not align with the widgets here. And also, um, this, this little gap here you see here, that has to stay on the archive page because the older entries, uh, the pagination here, you need some space, otherwise it's gonna stick to the first widget. So I left that there. If you go inside a post, however, that's gonna, you don't, you don't have the older entries part, so it's gonna have to stay like that. If you give this another extra 30, that'll be 60 pixels, which doesn't look consistent. So I took that out on the single, okay? So that's how that works on the phone. It looks, as it should, so that's fine, I guess. Um, one thing that I should also mention is there is a negative one pixel margin on top of the content, as you see here. The reason for that is because the border is one pixel, but if you keep that right here flush on to the bottom of the header, then you'll get two pixel widths here, two pixels of the border from the bottom of the header and a pixel from the top of the content. And that means it'll look thicker than it should. So if you want it to look like that and from master blogging, then it should hide it. And if you have, there's a, what I could, could have done is take out the border on just the first article and then um, left the border in for the other ones. But that means I'm going to have to, um, address the border separately. I didn't want to do that. So I just pushed it up one pixel. If that bugs you that this is 29, keep that zero and you're gonna have to use first child.
or first of type, I guess, for articles. So that's up to you. Um, you can learn how to do that in the course. So <laughs> take the course. It's coming out soon. Um, subscribe for the discount. What you need to do for this, I forgot to mention that. What you need to do for this is just copy the whole thing and drop it in. Uh, it's not logged in. Uh, drop it into themes, theme options, custom CSS. Uh, well, I'll show you where it is. I'm pretty sure you know where it is, right? I mean, you use Divi, right? Yeah. So, oh, I'm logged in. All right, that's good. So here, theme options. And drop it in here if you need to. If, and, but I would suggest using a child theme. If you're using a child theme, drop it in the child theme. Um, of course you need to use a child theme. If you want a child theme, just come to Almost Inevitable and I will give you a free child theme. Right here. Yep. So do that. All right. So And you can drop it into the, the child theme CSS like that. All right. And that will allow you to you can drop it in here like this and you're done. So that means the, um, the default blog layout will look like that. Okay. All right. So um, have fun with that. If you want to edit this, Go ahead, of course, it's it's yours to have. You can edit any way you want. Uh, this is just a good way of changing the general look of the default blog archive page layout. So have fun with that, and I will see you in another video. All right? Okay, bye-bye.